Because my project was a single section job, I don't have to set up any sections. If I want to, I can set up locations for the project, which I'm going to do now, just by way of illustration. You'll see that a default section, just named single section, um, has been set up for me. If I say I want my job to be locational, I can actually break down the this house into various different locations. So I can type in the location numbers that I want and I can call this main building, main building, and I'll set up a pool, uh, what should I call it, pool pavilion, which will be a building at the side of the pool and three, let us say garaging, and I'll just give it a short description. And number four, I'm going to say item location. I'd like to spend some time discussing this right now. Item location is required in any locational section because there will be items which are measured with a unit quantity which cannot be divided into something smaller than the unit quantity. For example, in this section, you'll be measuring your prelims, and your prelims are items, so they have to be stored separately, flagged against the item location. At a later point, if you want to do an analysis of your costs by location, you'll be able to apportion or pro rata the amount of the item location across the other locations. This location number can be ordered to suit whatever you like and you can change it at any time in the life of the project so that your, your, it, your locations are listed in a different order to the one that I've set them up in. The short description is what will be listed against the locations if you print them out and you will have the opportunity to say when you produce the bills that you want locational detail so that you will see in that case the quantity applicable to each location listed under the description block alongside the total for all locations for that bill item. And then the factor is any factor, you might, for example, have two pool pavilions that are identical and you could multiply them by two by simply putting in a factor of two. I won't do that here, but suffice it to say that whatever factor you put in will be applied to the measurement at the time that it's measured. So when you later have a look at your bill quantities as they build up, you will see the total quantity. Sometimes you require a section to print as an all trades bill. That means the bill items are listed in bill order and in their regular order, but they will not be broken into bill numbers with separate collection pages. And that is where this checkbox comes into play. If you tick print as continuous bill, you get a message saying, Checking this box will suppress bill numbers and trade descriptions in the section when the bills are printed. No trade references will be printed for the section and the bills will print continuously without collections. Is this really what you want? And for my section, I'm going to say no. But you should know that that option exists. You will find it useful in the future.